everyone and welcome to Sunday lunch. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, I know I normally do my uh, weekly roundup, but I thought I'd give Sunday lunch a go. So it is uh, two o'clock in the afternoon. So still lunchtime. Yeah, uh, I, don't, I say I had a quite busy weekend and I'm not a lot of time to do a full video. So I just thought I'd come up with a little, 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 little something, something to tide us over. And if people like Sunday lunch, I'll keep going with it rather than the roundup. Um, just a bit more of a, I guess, a combination of the roundup, atomic pop chat, just a bit of a chit chat. Um, and uh, yeah, if the format works out quite well. Then it's the sort of thing I'd like to do uh, live. Um, so maybe next week or the weekend after, maybe do a live version of, of Sunday lunch. I mean, to be fair, it's like all my other videos. You know, I'm just sort of sitting here chatting away to myself, talking nonsense. And then you know what I think about stuff that's going on as well as the reviews so I just literally five minutes ago uh, watched episode five of The Last of Us um, I didn't realize it was dropping early I started seeing reviews and I'm like how have they got episode five and then I had a little bit oh it's because it's been released and I think it's a really good move actually to release this a bit early I don't know if it's because um, they've changed the day in the States or they've moved it because of some sporting thing. I, I really don't know, but wow, I really love this episode coming into Sunday. I knew I was going to be reviewing episode four, which was, I felt was a bit meh. I was really disappointed after episode three. I was like, you know, they kind of kick, need to kick this up a notch after the type of episode we had in episode three, which I really enjoyed. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a nothing burger episode four. You know, they've got lost. They're in the wrong place because um, Ellie can't read a map, understandably. Um, and he's, he's got this crazy, crazy woman, um, you know, just going around shooting people and, you know, killing a doctor. Now, he, you know, he, he might have been a collaborator or whatever, but Jenny, one of the things you really need in the apocalypse that you kind of have a shortage of is uh, doctors. So that kind of big of belief why she she shoot the doctor even if she didn't like him, but um, yeah, she just sort of actually came across a bit, a bit of a loon by the end of it. Um, so yeah, episode five, obviously we're introduced to Frank, the guy that she's been looking for, and his son Sam, who's deaf, who the doctor was hiding because they're collaborators. It transpires that Frank was a collaborator because he needed to get medicine for his son. Um, you know, I think. You, I, I, you know, I'm sure there's lots of parents that would, you know, do anything. Um, and it really showed up her character. She's basically having a conversation with him and uh, with Frank towards the end. They've kind of pinned them down and just saying, well, you know, and he's like, you know, there's reasons. And she goes, oh, I know your reasons. And well, kids die. It was fate, you know, get over it. <laughs> She's like, wow, complete psycho. Um and again, like a lot of these things, you know, it's that the, the, the like they've taken over the town, and you see them when they kind of do the revolution and just hanging and murdering the uh, officials. And there's always that kind of bit that sort of goes, really, really, are you any better than the people that you're replacing? Um, yeah, there's just lots of you know rounding up collaborators, killing them. Um, it's supposed to be an open, free city, but yeah, as long as you agree with what she says, so. Yeah, you as ever in these kind of situations, you're just kind of trading off one lot of dictators for another set of dictators. But this episode was done really well. Um, towards the end, you know, uh, there's there's no sign of infected in this city. They were all driven ground, and the way that Joel, Ellie, um, Henry, and uh, Sam, I think it was. Sorry, did I call him Frank earlier? Henry um, to get out the towns through these tunnels um that they believe the the infected were in but they've they've sort of been cleared um and they sort of arrive pretty much at their end point to the state and they're going to get across the river and, and then they're out um but obviously they 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 catch up with them they they find them um and they're being pinned down by this guy so joel goes in kills this old guy but the others turn up and there's a truck then kind of there's a sinkhole that opens up and the truck plummets in, and just hundreds of the infected come pouring out. There's all that gunfire and uh, uh, 
that they managed to get away and uh, this psycho woman ends up getting getting eaten by one of the uh, one of the infected which was which actually was quite good comeuppance but pretty much all, all this lot I mean you see they're just eventually pouring and pouring out so you you assume pretty much all the revolutionaries will end up dead um, being taken out by these clickers and then the ones I'm calling cauliflower head <laughs> these massive great things come out um, and her sort of right hand man you just see him he's like he's like you you get away you run and <laughs> I have never seen somebody run so badly in my life. I know the actress is like carrying a, carrying a few pounds. I mean, not that I can talk, but um, <laughs> it's the most pointless running I've ever seen in my life. She's, and he's like, there's no way you would have survived the apocalypse if you run like that, love. <laughs> it's just <laughs> on this earth, you're going to survive that. It's absolutely hilarious. So, uh, so not unsurprisingly... One of these clickers catches her up and uh, manages to kill her. So it's like, that's good. She kind of got to come up and really. Mm. But yes, a much better episode, much more fast paced. Actually seeing the infected and how they all run and just overpower because it's so fast. These infected, um, and uh, unfortunately, the little boy gets bitten. Um, and Ellie um, cuts her hand and puts some blood into the bite, thinking that hopefully, because she's immune, that will sort of heal him or stop him from turning. Unfortunately, that's not the case. And the, and the little boy does turn in the morning and then goes after Ellie. Um, and then obviously uh, Joel and Henry come in. And Joel goes to try and help Ellie, and then the father's like firing the gun at him, and then ultimately he basically has to shoot and kill his son. And then he's just so distraught by that that he uh, he sort of self deletes, which you know, given everything that he's done, and he's give up, and then he sacrificed to save his son, and the people he had to betray to save his son. It it kind of makes sense that you know there's no point for him if he hasn't got his little boy. So quite a quite a sad ending. Um, to their story, uh, but again, again, very well acted, uh, acted episode. The little boy was good. Um, I don't know if he's, he's deaf in real life, but uh, yeah, played it really well. As so I really, really enjoyed this episode, and I think that's the sort of pace that we kind of now need going up to the finale. Excuse me, we've only got like three episodes to go, so if they kind of keep at this pace. I think yeah, we could be good, good in for a really good season finale. So fingers crossed on the um, the Last of Us. Yeah, definitely good, definitely good. So yeah, I was expecting to make a, a bit of a video about episode four. Ugh. Episode five, absolutely pulled it back. So sticking with The Last of Us, awesome. Um, yeah, so uh, I heard some, uh, some, some, what I think is good news today. I was re reading, trolling through uh, the alerts as you do. And um, I came across a story. Let's see if I can. Let's just shut that. So the peripheral has been renewed for a season two, which I'm. Um, absolutely thrilled about um this is this is great uh I, I was, i'm still making my way through the book unfortunately i don't have as much time to read as i used to um uh, due to how the world has changed i work from home a lot whereas i used to have my commute i, I, I still commute in a couple, of couple of times a week and that's where i normally get my reading done so uh so yeah i was working through the book but i really enjoyed season one it's a uh, real proper sci-fi it's based to say on a sci-fi book acting was very good the story um is a uh, set in the future well like so their present day is 2032 i think it was and then when they're in what they think is a sim they're in um 75 years on top of that and that's set in london 2032 is set in america in the south um and it starts off with these characters um flynn and her brother 
who play various sims and games to make money. Um, and what starts off is they, they see the headgear, they think they're in a simulation, but actually their consciousness is actually is transported into the future. They say 75 years to, to London. And initially London looks amazing and it's all pristine. Um, and obviously the technology's moved on, but we actually find out that all these, these what they call the jackpot, all these events happened with like diseases and wars and, uh, and nuclear. Um, explosions in America and London's actually sort of you know all of this is like a hologram projection that people see but a lot of London is sort of actually in, in ruins and these peripherals are sort of 3D created shells that you, they, you project your conscious into so you can become anything you want to in these peripherals um, it's real sort of twisty turny you've got to pay attention like you say you're flitting between the two time zones and their kind of fates are kind of interlocked. Um, uh, but every time they, there's a, there's a server that was built that enables this. And what they say is when they, when they travel to the past, they create a stub. So it's basically an offshoot. And that offshoot is completely separate and different from linear time. So you've got multiple offshoots that have happened and some, some people have died in those offshoots, but they're still alive in the primary timeline. So it's all very timey-wimey, people, very timey-wimey. But yeah, really pleased to read that. We're getting a season two. It was left on a cliffhanger. Um, I, 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 I mean, I assume they'll probably start filming later on this year. So we'll maybe get season two next year. I don't know. But well done, Amazon. So that's that's three now. So we've got Reacher, Terminalist, and the Peripheral Season 2. So well done, Amazon. You make some very questionable decisions, but this was a good one for me. And if you want to know about a bit more about the Peripheral, um, in my videos, end of last year, the Nerdy Weekly Roundups, I covered the whole season. So do go have a look if you're interested. Um, give, obviously, give a synopsis of each episode. So there's a few spoilers in there. But if you want to get a feel for what the show's about, Go take a look. Fab. Um, so what else have we been having? So yeah, um, I started reviewing Wolfpack uh, last week, the new Sarah Michelle Geller show on Paramount Plus. So we've got this premise of these teenage kids who there's two teenage kids who were born werewolves, there's two, two or three kids who have been bitten are turning into werewolves and a massive mahoosive great alpha werewolf running around obviously biting these kids and they get these phone calls to say that they're in danger they've got to go and um, the the wolf that bit them is after them and um basically he needs to kill them before the the next full moon which we assume then means that this makes it a permanent change they haven't really said why this is but um so the first two episodes say check out my review last week that covers them in detail but you know they're a bit ploddy um it was okay but it was a little bit like two episodes sort of covered a day basically it was a bit like so i'm pleased to say the third episode did pick it up um still not not perfect but certainly picked picked up the pace and moved the story forward which is really good and we're sort of seeing that the, these four kids are almost are like sort of starting to become a pack themselves. And um, when they're together, like their eyes glow this amber color. Um, and they, again, got arrested, were picked up by the same Sarah Michelle Geller again. They keep like questioning these kids because they think one of the kids in, in the high school started the fires, which obviously drove all the animals and the, and the werewolves out. Um, and they're trying to, assess or find out which which kids um did it kid or kids did it so they've been hauled in again <laughs> but then what they find is that e each of them have got their kind of own unique heightened senses or abilities and the brother has um acute uh, the, the the two the two twins that um are born vamp uh, werewolves has acute hearing, but then they could all hear each other. They're all in different like interview rooms, but they could all hear each other. And then she's got like an acute sense of smell. And in heightened situations, they can all suddenly smell and all this kind of thing. So they they're sort of 
figuring out that they're connected in some way. So it would suggest the the werewolf that bit them, the other two kids, <laughs> you're following all this, um, is potentially the father of the two that were born werewolves. Got it? Okay. <laughs> But by the end of the episode, so we've got we've got a cop who is just a bit of an ass, you know, um, goes in and slams the the, the the brother up against the wall, and he's like, confess and tell us what you know, and he's like, you know, just get off me, and he's like, oh, that's a sort of a police officer, and it's all like his dad comes in and he's like, tells him to get his hands off your son. This guy's just a complete tool, um, so uh, and just an out and out bully, and then he he basically gets a warning from Sarah Michelle Gellar saying like, if you you know lay a finger on those kids again, you're off the task force kind of thing. So what does he do? He turns up at their house <laughs> and then starts to like beat on the kid again to get a confession out of him. I mean, it doesn't really make any sense why. <laughs> you know, he's already been told not to. He's like kid, young kids, especially like 16, 17, um, and just goes around and starts like, you know, trying to break the kid's arm, like, confess, confess, and he's like, what the hell? So this, this massive alpha werewolf comes out of nowhere and takes this policeman out and ends up, like, killing him. Um, but what is kind of transpiring or what it's looking like is that this, this alpha is actually sort of protecting the kids rather than trying to kill them. So whether there's more than one werewolf running around, we don't know. And he, the, the, out of the three kids got, that got bitten, Connor last week, looked like he was killed but we don't know and uh yeah the kids are going how do we better find connor should we find out what's happened to connor and like nobody's looking for this poor kid so we don't know if he's dead or not but um yeah it's it's a bit of a a weird not a weird show it's just i yeah i can't quite put my finger on it i think i said that last week but it, the, the episode was definitely better a bit more fast-paced I'll check out next week's, but uh, yeah, I, I'm really not sure. I mean, I guess I, I know I'm not the target audience for it, but the writing's just a little bit. Uh, I know, very. I guess sort of this is going to happen to drive the plot where it doesn't really make sense for that to be happening. But anyway, you know what? What? What can you do? But yeah, we'll see what happens next week. But. Not sure I'm feeling this show, have to say. Hey ho. Now, now this is quite obviously controversial. <laughs> Been seeing it all sort of kicking off on Twitter on, and various um, YouTuber channels. Oh, I always hate it when there's like YouTubers that I like and they're sort of at each other. It's almost like, oh, guys, don't, don't fall out over a TV show. You know, it's... Uh, it's just a TV show. And, you know, I kind of respect both both opinions and views. I understand why, why some YouTubers feel how they feel. And um, But, you know, controversially, you know, I'm looking forward to this, I have to say. I can't, I think, you know, I've said in other streams, I hate New Trek. I really can't stand Discovery, Picard. Picard season one was just boring. And stupid and I got about two episodes in season two and it was even more ridiculous so I was out uh, I watched the first two seasons of Discovery um, the first episode of season three you know which is pointing a phaser the wrong way around I mean that it was just yeah I, I really I, I really tried I really wanted to like it and didn't <laughs> Um, and then everything I've heard around Picard season three with Terry Vitalis, who, you know, is clearly a talented guy. He's uh, done the um, 12 Monkeys TV show and is a, is a Star Trek veteran. You know, he worked on Voyager and um, Enterprise. You know, he knows he knows how this stuff works and um, how Star Trek should be written. So, you know, the trailers I've seen, the things that R&B has said, um, Dave Cullen, um, you know, uh, all sound really positive. I mean, at the end of the day, proofs in the pudding, but this starts on Thursday. I am going to check it out. I am going to review it and let you know what I think. I'm just, I just really hope it's as good as 
um, people are saying. But I also do take on board, you know, if it's good, you know, Kurtzman will take credit for it, even though he's had nothing to do with it. And if it's if it's crap, it'll all be Terry Metalis' fault. You know, we all know that, right? And I don't like the fact that this is still with Kurtzman and his secret hideout. But I, I, I'm really torn on this. I mean, I kind of think we don't, you know, really don't want it to stay with those guys. But if it's good and the fans like it, I hope that gives Terry Metalis more opportunity to make good Star Trek. And whether he'd be in a position to start his own production company and he could, you know, negotiate it or take it off secret hideout. I mean, I think that is the best outcome. And that's why I'm a little bit maybe, you know, maybe we should support this to help him and maybe get it away from hideout. It's a difficult one. Um, and only, I guess, time will tell, A, whether it's any good and whether it has a positive or negative effect on the franchise and, and staying with, with Kurtzman. I know we've all been really, really burned. I don't want to support Secret Hideout at all um, for how they've shat all over the show and the fans. But I do want us to have good Trek. And if Terry's making good Trek, should we support good Trek? So I'd like to say, I respect both both the opinions of, of the, the YouTubers that I like. And I, I kind of agree with both of them. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, we need to get a secret hideout, a hideout or Kurtzman, certainly, and be, uh, what's a goldsmith as far away from this show as possible. Um, but, God, do we just want some good Trek? <laughs> and I really hope Terry gives us good Trek, but not that it ends up extending secret hideouts tenure. So I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, do let me know what you think. Um, I'm just hoping it's a really good show. Um, I just want to be able to enjoy, enjoy Star Trek again, I have to say. And, uh, yeah, so I'll be watching this on Thursday. I assume we're just getting the one episode. I don't know. I've not seen. Um, and, again, obviously, this is in Paramount in the States. Um, I don't know if it's going to be on the Paramount channel or Amazon here. Um, Picard seasons one and two have been on Amazon for us here in the UK. So um, I'm assuming it's going to be on Amazon again, depending on so, you know what, what contract they've signed. But um, either way, it will be on Amazon or, or Paramount Plus this week. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that, I have to say. Sorry. Sorry. I feel like <laughs> I feel like I need to apologise for being excited for, for Star Trek, which is something I never thought I'd have to do. But um, our, our, our shows are just in such a weird place right now. Um, I think, like, what, what, what is good is that, uh, you know, obviously there's, there's rumours. Well, gosh, yeah, the rumours um, flying around around Star Wars at the moment are insane. It's like, they had the opportunity to wind back and decanon the sequel trilogy decided it cost too much money so let's put ray and grogu in a film are they insane <laughs> they again they like completely missed the boat i mean there are obviously ray fans out there and and all power to you um and i do feel so for daisy ridley i think she had terrible writing to deal with and you know they, they wrote her as a, as a mary sue that's not her fault i think she done the best she could with it <laughs> The material she was given nothing against uh, Daisy Ridley at all. Um, she seems like a really nice person, in fact. And I think I think pretty much all the cast of these films were done dirty. All of them, you know, especially um, John Bodega, he got absolutely shafted. Um, so, but <laughs> the majority of people who are very vocal about Disney Star Wars. You know, they're, they're not fans of Ray. If the characters were written well, who knows? Um, and people are already getting bored and tired of Grogu. So, yes, everyone goes, oh, Grogu sells. But not for much longer, you know, and uh, we're going to get a whole new Mandalorian season three with him in it. And I believe Pied, Pied, 
<laughs> Pascal is leaving at the end of season three. So that sort of money train is like probably coming to an end as well. But I just I just cannot it beggars belief how they could make such a poor decision. <laughs> so let's reset it all. We've got the technology, you know, we could we could get Carrie Fisher in there, get Harrison Ford, we'll probably have to play mind you say they probably pay a gazillion dollars, which they don't have right now. But there's old Marion, you know, things they could have done. Ray and Grogu. What can I say? These people get paid an insane amount of money for making incredibly poor decisions. It, yeah. Just to throw six to start. You know those things you used to make in the 80s, the little you put a number and you used to do the flip thing and it's like, and then you open it up. They must have, I think they have one of those on the table and they literally like pick a number, pick a number, KK, and then they pick a number, you know, and then they go, Ray and Grogu. Because <laughs> there's just no logic to their bloody decisions at all. Oh my days. What are they like? <sighs> so there's probably about another 200 million they're going to waste making a Ray and Grogu film. Yay. Anywho. So. Uh, last week's week, I caught up with episode three of Tulsa King. I love that show. I love that show. Um, <laughs> so, um, not unsurprisingly, you know, he's, he's uh, after all the, the law enforcement officers, and no, no, nothing can happen again. I'm a cop. You're a criminal. Of course, they end up shagging again. Which is cool, it's fine. And I think they, they, I think that she's, uh, you know, really intrigued by him and looked up all his rap sheet and all this kind of thing. But, you know, she, she gets on with him and just kind of clicks. And, um, yeah, so they, I think their relationship is, is quite, quite endearing, actually, and sort of see how that, that plays out. But the key thing that kind of happened this episode um, is uh, uh, he has to uh, go renew his driving licence. Because obviously he's in a different state. He's got a California driving license, I think, expired while he was in jail. And he needs to get one. Now he's in, in Tulsa. So uh, he goes for his driving test and he's driving along. This car pulls up next to him. And this guy in a balaclava just starts shooting into the car. And it grazes the head of the uh, the um, driving instructor. Well, a bit more grazes, sort of cuts open, sort of skims and cuts open his forehead. And um, <laughs> he's just like, get down. And he's like following this car and it's all car chases. And I was kind of thinking the car, the car gets away. But then he gets a partial plate. <laughs> he just reaches over, sort of sticks his thumb in the car on this guy's head. And then he's like, what are you doing? And he's like, I got a partial plate. And then starts writing in blood on the windshield. This partial plate before he forgets it. This poor driving instructor is just like, what the going on? So, um, yeah, he ends up phoning, you know, uh, back to New York saying, like, someone just tried to whack me. What I thought everything was done and sorted. And he's just like, he's like, yeah, no, it's, it's nothing, nothing to this end. You know, you've, you've made some other enemies there. And we saw last week that some people have recognized him, like, from way back and, and we're after him so he's sort of then track tracking down who it was who tried to tried to kill him um and they also thought i had this this sort of uh event outside the sort of weed shop and um he sees his kid getting like absolutely like off his rocket and on um like laughing gas um and he sort of realizes that you can you can sell this stuff now so he sort of, again, come up with a scheme that, like, we have four tanks, um, X amount of balloons, £10 a pop. We can make 100 grand over X amount of days, and they're going to go to this fair and, and start selling the, these things. So that's kind of teed up for next week, because when they sort of, you know, what happens next week, there's a little bit of a, bit of a turf fight going to start. Um, but this show is great fun, really good fun. <laughs> I just love it, you know, because, you know, he's he's, 75 in the show i think he's probably about 75 in real life 
So, you know, he is behaving like, you know, he's not doing stuff that you kind of go, I'm not really sure you could do that at your age. I mean, it just really fits with the character. He still holds his own. He's building a team around him. He's not taking any crap. And, uh, yeah, really good fun. Really good fun. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, watching a bit more of the old uh, Tulsa King. Do check it out. If, if Say, if you like your sort of Sopranos and um, Goodfellas or The Wire, things like that, um, I think you'll really enjoy this show. It's such good fun. Um, that's also on Paramount+. Plus. I think all episodes have dropped, so you can binge that one if you want to. So, cool. Yeah, so that was it. Say so short and sweet, hopefully. So a little little bit of chat around what's going on and the, the quick overview of the shows we've been watching this week to say whether yay or nay. So big yay for The Last of Us, uh, mm, Wolfpack, and a big thumbs up for, for Tulsa King. And I was looking forward to, sorry, can't see the three. So, um, yeah, depending on what's what's happening, I think it's on Thursday, yeah, the 16th, I will try and do a post-show review, jump straight on, let you know what I think. Um, and, uh, yeah, yeah, go from there. So, let's see. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed your Sunday lunch. This isn't my lunch, by the way. Um, <laughs> and a little quick, a little bit of chat, a little bit of a goss what's going on um and yeah hopefully i can do these live going forward um maybe not next weekend because i've got a very busy next weekend so i'll probably have to call a quick one of these um maybe the week after so it'd be great to do one live have a chat see what you think what's going on uh if i do i'll put the details on uh twitter where you can find me and the ldm50 um, as twin blonde and uh yeah so do like sh do i can never say it like share and subscribe if you liked a little bit of little little nibble on the sunday lunch and i will see you next week take care bye bye <laughs>